my life is poetry. Seeing my father anew. How strange at 86 to start understanding my father in a way that should have happened many years ago in the steady course of adult life. The distant, aloof man, a picture I've lived with, wasn't really that at all. I understand now he was a lonely man, a young man out of place. He was an innate electronics genius, and I now realize a sensitive man. The man who had been in World War I, he was at Moose and at Argonne battles. They were pure carnage and horror. He could do his electronic work very well, but it couldn't cope with the material world around him. A man, I suppose, who should never have married. A man very good at what he did, but obviously I see now adrift, unable to function in the ordinary world of everyday life. His mental disturbance was of a sensitive man who couldn't function in real life who retreated into a life of aloofness and unapproachableness. A hurting man who, despite much therapy, never got out of the shell of his problem, who lived his life looking out at a world which in his lost, lostness he never understood. Today my heart aches for that lost man. The power of film. At age six, my life was transformed. I was a little boy living in a half rural ordinary place in the coal mining region of northeastern Pennsylvania. Every Saturday, an older neighborhood boy would be chosen to take the little children about a mile to the movie theater. A crocodile would be formed, and the string of little boys would head off to the pictures. Sexism by association, boys meant not girls early training for male privilege. One little boy in those lines was me, little Bob. And I was to have my life changed forever, irrevocably, at the theater. The films were usually westerns. This particular Saturday, a more adult, romantic type of film was shown. The year was 1930, sound had arrived. This film was Seventh Heaven, featuring a very young Charles Farrell and Janet Gaynor. That very little boy, so small in a big seat in a very ordinary theater, not a grand palace, watched that film with rapt attention. The boy was in awe of Charles Farrell. Somehow, he was enchanted and felt very strange. An overwhelming sensation that I can feel and not explain to this very day. I was happy, I was delighted, I was enthralled. What stirred that little boy's heart is a puzzle, a mystery, that little Bobby was in the seventh heaven of his own. That time was then, the place was then. But that little boy would never be the same again. From then on, my idea of beauty and desire would be for those of my own sex. A friend told me Seventh Heaven would have a special showing at the Egyptian Theater on Hollywood Boulevard on August 2nd, 2010, to which I went, I was again overwhelmed. Yes, I still feel the way I did as a little boy, excited and transformed, still in awe of Charles Farrell's and my seventh heaven.
cold in the snowy wind. We cajoled him. Do it again, Daddy. And the Sunday dusk obscured Mother's look of admonishment toward this bad boy, annoying man-child. What, you're going to tell me you broke something now? Our giddiness squelched. Her grimace replaced with a crooked smile as the immigrant, newly arrived relatives opened their door to commotion <coughs> and the bakery cake, perfect in its welcome. <coughs> Constricting 